everyone. In this video, we will be going over how to store data from an Excel worksheet into an array using C Sharp in the Excel Interop library. In front of us, we have a workbook that contains some names and their respective ages. By the end of this video, we will have taken all of the data shown here and stored it into a string array. This may be useful if you need to read data and then work with it in memory, or if you need to extract Excel data for usage in another system or application. So far, we have a project that will open up the workbook we just looked at. If you have any questions on how to set up the project, please refer to the first link in the description. Our first step will be to create a stack function that will return a string array with the range of data that we specify. Let's start by typing public static string get cells as array worksheet ws string start cell string end cell. This function will take three parameters. The first is the worksheet that we want to extract the data from. The next two parameters will be the first and the last cell of the range. Now we want to write a statement that will parse out the data and store it into a string array. Let's type return array worksheet.range start cell plus colon plus end cell dot cells dot value of type object dot select o arrow o dot to string dot to array. Now this is a messy statement, so let's break it down a bit and explain what's going on. The first half of the statement is defining our range of data and casting it as an array of type object. The second half of the statement utilizes the link library to select and return the data as a string data type. The reason why we have to do the second part is because the data in Excel is actually dynamic at runtime. This means if we try to work with cells that contain numbers, like our H column, C sharp will treat it like if it's an integer, while the names will be treated like it's a string. Since we won't always know what type of data we're working with, that's why this function will read in everything as an object and then return the result of the toString method. Now going back to our main function, let's call this function by typing string Excel data equals get cells as array worksheet B4 C11. B4 is the starting point in our range of data, and C11 is the last cell. Next, we will want to print out the contents of the string array by typing 4 int x equal to 0 x less than excel data dot length x plus plus. Lastly, make sure to include console.readline if you haven't already so we can stop the console window from closing on us after this program runs. Let's go ahead and run our code. From the console, we can see that we've successfully extracted the data and have printed it out. It's important to note that the data reads from left to right and then down. This could impact how you want to read in the data depending on your use case. There may be other scenarios where you would want to make separate calls for each column in case you wanted all of the names and then all of the ages. Let's go back to our code. Our function is working well so far, but there is one scenario that can break it. Let's see what happens when we have the same cell for both the starting and end cells. Let's run our code. We ran into a runtime exception. This happened because we can't cast only one cell as an array. To fix this, we'll have to add a condition for when the start cell and end cell are the same. Let's type if start cell equals end cell, then return new string quotes plus worksheet dot range start cell dot value. This if statement will handle the scenario of only reading in one cell of data. We also add the double quotes here so that way the value of the cell is casted as a string. Let's run our code again. This function now works in this scenario as it has returned the single cell that we have specified. Let's go ahead and run our code again with the full range of data because there is another detail we need to go over. If we look at this set of data, we can see that this array does not contain empty values for the cells in row 9. This could be a good or bad thing depending on if you want to keep track of empty cells, 
Let's go back to our code. Let's write another function that will read in all of the data, including the empty cells. We will start by copying our previous function and renaming it to get all cells as array. We will also keep the if statement, but let's delete the return statement. Next, we will replace it by typing return worksheet.range start cell plus colon plus end cell dot cells dot cast range dot select selector dot to array. The keyword selector will show an error. This is because this is referring to a function that we still have to define. Let's create another function by typing private static string selector range cell. In our first function, we selected everything and returned the result of the toString function. This new selector function will essentially do the same thing, except it will also return an empty value when you come across empty cells. Let's finish writing this function by typing if cell.value2 equals null, then return empty quotes. This if statement is what tells the function that if a cell is empty, aka if it's null, then we should return an empty string, whereas before, it was just ignoring these null cells altogether. We still want this function to return any other data type as a string, so let's continue by typing if cell.value2.getType.toString equals system.double return double cell.value2.toString. This if statement will return the value of the cell as a string if it is of type double. Let's go ahead and copy the statement a few more times for other data types. This should take care of most data types. You can always expand this if else statement to cover other data types if necessary. Also, this function can stay private since it's not supposed to be called directly. Back in our main function, let's go ahead and change the function we're calling to get all cells as array. Let's go ahead and run our code. In the console window, we can see that our array now contains two empty values, which correspond to the two empty cells in row 9. We have now created two static functions that we can use to read Excel data and store it into an array. One thing you may have noticed is that we have to pass in a worksheet each time we want to call these functions. Wouldn't it be easier and make more sense if these static functions were instead just member functions of the worksheet class already? Although we can't modify the source code of the worksheet class, there is a technique in c -sharp that will allow us to simulate as if they were. What I'm alluding to are extension methods. Extension methods allow us to extend the functionality of an already existing class. Our next step will be to transform these two functions into extension methods of the worksheet class. Let's start by adding a new class and calling it extensionmethods.cs. This class will be public and static. Let's go back and cut our two functions and paste them here. You may need to add a reference to the Excel Interop library for this class. The only difference we will have to make is we will insert the keyword this before the worksheet parameter in both functions. What this does is it allows us to call this function as if it were a member of the worksheet class. Let's go back to our main function to demonstrate this. So instead of just calling this function, we can just type worksheet dot get all cells as array. And now we only need to pass in our starting and ending cells. Let's run our code one more time. As we can see, the function still works the same. It is now just easier to use. 
That's all for this video. If you found this video helpful and want to see more tutorials like these, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if there are any topics I haven't covered, feel free to suggest them in the comments and I may make a video about them in the future. Thanks for watching.